Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Whew. I woke up this morning and it was, God, it was early, early, early. And I couldn't go back to sleep, which is weird because I was up late last night. It was just one of those nights where you ever just get into doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, like you pick up and put away, clean up, do a little bit here, do a little bit there. And the next thing you know, it's midnight. An old Mercedes over there, that's cool. Yeah. And both of my kids were still up. They're on a weird sleep schedule because it's summer and, you know, they just, they're just, they got a weird sleep schedule going on, so. I never, I never quite know when they're going to be awake anymore. It, they, it could be at 3 a.m. they could be awake. 4 o'clock in the afternoon they may be asleep. You know, I don't know. And I have two of them, so they're both on different sleep schedules on different days, so. I don't ever know and it's screwing with my sleep schedule because my younger son in the summertime sleeps on the couch he doesn't sleep in his room now I do make him sleep in his room during school like you need to stay up here go to sleep you know you're far away from every device you're far away from any distractions um, and you, I don't let him take anything in there in his room, like a cell phone or a laptop or anything. You, you cannot take anything in there. Go in there and go to sleep. Because otherwise he'll sit in there and mess around and not go to sleep. Sorry, I'm drinking. I know that bothers some people. But it's early. And I hadn't had my coffee yet. I don't like being around people who are drinking anything either. So I get it. Um... So I thought since I was up early, I would go ahead and, you know, do some useful crap. So, just left Costco, filled my car up. Gas is like four twelve a gallon right now, and it's sad that that seems really good. <laughs> I got my um, Costco gift card for trading in my my phone, and so I went ahead and used that to fill my tank up. I won't even get two full tanks of gas out of that. I won't even, no, not at all, like one and a half. That's bullshit, man. I'm unhappy with the current state of affairs. It is cloudy this morning. It is really cloudy. It's only 76 degrees. It's very pleasant outside. I went outside for a little while this morning while he was out there and he was so, he, most of the time, most of the time when I see him, you go out there and he'll want you to pet him for a few minutes, but then he just goes and lays down. He doesn't want you to pet him very long. He's not a lap cat. He just wants you to pet him for a minute or two and then he'll go lie down somewhere nearby. He wants to be nearby, but he's not one to get all up on you. You know, he's not like that. So, but this morning he really wanted to be petted. I, I brought, you know, I, I saw he was out there so I put him some fresh food out there. I got him some fresh water in his bowl and, you know, and he ate just a little bit of the food, but then he came back over to me like, pet me, pet me, pet me. So, okay. So I stayed out there and I petted him for about probably 20 minutes. <laughs> pet me, pet me. And then finally he went and laid down. He was just very, very eager for pets this morning. I don't know. So. I stayed out there. It, it wasn't hot at all, so I don't mind. I'll be honest, when it's really hot, it's it's hard to stay out there and pet him. It's nice though having that umbrella out there now, and I have that little that little ottoman out there, so I can sit on that and, and pet him under in the shade. So that's actually a lot better. But yes, he's sweet. He is so sweet. Evie came to the door. She goes to whatever door he's at, whether he's at the front door or the back. She'll go to that door and just glare at him. And it's funny because she'll sit there all hunched over and she looks like Godzilla. She's just, you know, Godzilla always has that pinched up mad looking face. Yeah, she looks like that. We call her Godzilla. <laughs> like, Evie, quit being Godzilla. Quit glaring at him. He doesn't even care. You glare at him and he does not care. He's not afraid of you. He, he's, it has no effect on him when you do this. As long as you don't slap him or anything. Every now and then she'll reach out and smack him. And he looks at her like, why do you do that? He never fights back. He never instigates anything. 
he just exists in her presence and she doesn't like it. So she just smacks him for no reason. And he always gives her the same look like, why? He looks hurt like, what? I didn't do anything. Why did you do that? And I told him, I said, she's just an asshole. I'm sorry. She's just a jerk. It's not you. It's her. She, but if you think about it, you know, I kind of, I know she's not looking at it this way. I think she's just legitimately a jerk. You know, she, we got her in, when did we get her? August of 2016, we adopted her from a shelter. And at that time, she was about five months old, so. Oh my God, she's six years old, holy shit. And uh, so we had her and only her for two months. And it was probably two months of bliss for her. She seemed very happy. It was funny though, because when we adopted her, they were really eager at the shelter for us to adopt her. They were really pushing her. We went to the shelter to look at another, another cat Oh, no, no. Yeah, that cat's fine, but this cat, this is, they said, she's perfect for your family. She's so calm. She's perfect for you. I mean, the one you came here to see is fine, too, but this cat, they'd had her for five months. You know, it's a no-kill shelter, and they'd had her for five months. She was born there, and they're like, you know, you know, you really ought to consider this cat, so they, they named her Grayson, like, no, that's, that name doesn't suit her at all. So, I gotta go into Walmart in a minute. Um, so, we, we adopted her instead of the one we went there to look at. And um, we got her home. And at that time, we were living in the apartment. And um, she, oh my God, it was so funny. Because she would just zoom from one room to another. And I, she discovered carpet and she could really get traction on the carpet. And she loved it because at the shelter, you know, they just have like tile floors and they can't get any traction. But at the apartment, we had carpet in the, in the living room and the bedrooms. And she would just zoom from one room to the other. She loved it. And my older son, it was funny. She would attack his legs. Like he, if he had on shorts, she would run in the room, kind of attack his legs, run away, come back, attack his legs, run away. Just him though. She wouldn't do it to anybody but him. It was really funny. So she had two months of bliss and then, you know, pumpkin came along. We didn't plan on getting pumpkin, but pumpkin just kind of fell into our life two months later. And pumpkin was so tiny, you could hold her in your hand. She might have been four weeks old, but she was born to a feral cat who gave birth under this lady's house and then one day left and didn't come back. They think something happened to her. So this pumpkin had no mom poor little thing. We had to bottle feed her for a little bit. She couldn't drink out of like a, a, a saucer or anything. We got kitten formula for her, but we had to bottle feed her for a little bit. But she, she caught on pretty quickly and, you know, so she, we only had to do it for a little bit. And, uh, we had to teach her how to use a litter box. She didn't know how to do that. And, you know, so it was, you know, and, and then Pumpkin just followed Evie everywhere. Evie was just like, get, get away. Ugh. Evie wanted nothing to do with her. Like, I don't like you. Stop getting close to me. Ugh. And Pumpkin, like, Evie would be laying down somewhere. Pumpkin would just come up and just flop on her. Just blah. <laughs> I'm going to be your friend whether you like it or not, you grouchy ass cat. <laughs> Evie did not like her at all. But eventually she gave up. Like, fine. <sighs> Pumpkin was a pest. She just messed with her and tried, played with her constantly. And Evie was just not interested. Evie wanted nothing to do with her. She just kind of tolerated her. And then the ultimate insult. Two years ago, we bring home Boop. The little Tasmanian devil. The little goblin. Oh my god. We named her Olive, but that name does not. No name fits this cat. We still call her the kitten all the time because she still acts like a kitten. She has not changed at all. She just got a little bit larger. But she acts the same as she did when she was two months old. She is just... She is a menace. Oh, my God. When she gets bored, she will come into my room and just destroy things. She will come knock stuff over, chew on things, bite things. She will bite me like... 
stop every night she gets bored and she comes in there and just messes with stuff. And if I, if I put her out of my room, she'll sit on the outside of the door and just meow, just meow, meow, meow. <sighs> and I yell at her through the door. I know you're bored. Go bother somebody else. <laughs> I want to bother you. <laughs> Damn it. So we brought Boop home and Boop became Evie's worst nightmare because Evie hated her. Pumpkin hated her. They hated her. With a passion, they hated her. But she didn't care. She still, I don't think she cares. She torments them every day. So you kind of have to see it from Evie's point of view. I mean, Evie has just lived a life of torment and she's just dead inside now. So she just hates everybody. I think she hates us. I think she hates all of us. Because every now and then she'll, she'll just look at me like, she, I swear she just has a look of disgust on her face. Like, you suck. I just, everybody in this house sucks. <laughs> she hates us. So, and now Wally has come along and she's like, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? And he is the most gentle, sweet cat. He never, he has never once initiated any kind of aggression or anything to anyone. He is the sweetest little cat. And he just, he's like Garfield. He just wants to lay around and eat and sleep, you know, and that's it. That is all he cares about. He does not have any interest in anything else. I mean, I know he's not neutered and maybe he has interest in females, but I, I have been around intact Tomcats before because when I was growing up, my dad really, he's, he was one of these people that just, you don't spend money on pets. Okay. You just don't, you don't go get them spayed or neutered or whatever. You don't deal. You just don't do that. Don't worry about it. You know, it's no big deal. That's just, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people, especially in older generations, look at pets that way. Like, I'm not spent, I'm not, I'm not buying a dog or a cat. If one gets dumped off here, I might keep it. But I'm not spending money on it beyond the bare minimum. I'll buy it some food if it won't eat tables. You know, I'll give it table scraps. That's it. I'm not taking him to the vet for any reason. But I will say he's changed a bit. He had this dog. 20 years ago best dog it was a yellow little yellow dog that he found somebody had tied it to a tree at the dump like where he goes to take his trash because they don't you know they live in the middle of nowhere you have to take your trash to the dump this little puppy somebody just tied it to a tree at the dump and just left it there with no food no water no nothing and my dad saw it out there and he gave it, he, he went back and he gave it some food and some water. And he, he went by there again the next day and it was still there. So he took the dog home. He said, I'm not, I can't leave that poor. And it was, he was, it was tiny and skinny and just pitiful. And we didn't think he would get very big. It was a very small puppy. He got big. I think he had some boxer in him. Um, he definitely, his build was kind of like that of a boxer, but he was yellow. He was this yellow dog, you know. He got pretty, pretty stock. He was stocky. Like, he was very stocky. I don't know. He wasn't tall or anything, but he was just very solid, you know. He was a strong dog. But that, okay. So that, that was the best damn dog. I think of all the dogs I've been around in my life, that was in the top five of every dog I have ever encountered. He was very smart, very, he was a great dog. He was just a great dog. Um, well, the trouble was though, he liked to tussle with the local wildlife, raccoons, groundhogs, possums, whatever he could get a hold of, he wanted to, to kill it. Um, so, and out there, you know, if you have cattle, if you have cows, you don't want groundhogs because they dig big holes and the cows step down in the hole, break their leg. So, they don't mind if you kill groundhogs because they, they hurt the cattle. And 
if any if my dad knew anybody that had a truck had a groundhog problem he would just take fred the dog's name was fred he would just release fred out there into the field and fred would go deal with the groundhog it was quick he was very quick he was very good at what he did but anyway during one of his tussles he got bitten by a raccoon and there is, uh, there is a disease, I don't know if it's bacterial or viral, I don't know what it is, coonhound disease. And I think it has something to do, I think it's the bacteria in the saliva of the raccoon. If, uh, if a, a coonhound, you know, the dogs that they used to hunt raccoons, coonhounds, if they get bitten by one of these raccoons that have whatever that bacteria is, it can cause paralysis and the paralysis can go on for months. Well, Fred was bitten by a raccoon and he got the disease and he was paralyzed and couldn't walk and for, oh my God, he couldn't walk. I bet for four or five, probably close to six months, my dad, he had to wear a diaper. My dad had to change his diaper, you know, clean him up all the, you know, numerous times a day, had to give him food and water took him to the vet over and over. He, he ended up spending like $5,000 at the vet on treatments for him and uh, had to do, you know, the vet had to show him how to do physical therapy, like how to work his legs and, you know, help him retain muscle strength. And he did get better. He did eventually get better. Um, and he lived, he lived to a ripe old age. Uh, when did he die? I don't remember, but he, he lived a long time. He, he recovered, but it took a long time. And I never thought I would see my dad spend that kind of time and money on an animal. I had never seen that in my life. That's not to say he never took an animal to the vet, but he really was of, of the generation where you, you don't spend that kind of money on an animal. You just put it down. And you don't spend money on that either. If you get my drift, you don't take them to the vet for that. It's just a very different mindset. Is it right or wrong? I don't know, but different people see things differently depending on how they were raised, whatever generation they're from. People see things differently. But I kind of see things from Evie's point of view. Like, you've already put me through two shitty cats that I have to live with. <laughs> And I can't stand. I'm not saying they're shitty. I'm just trying to look at it from Evie's point of view. Evie, I think, would be very happy living in a home with no other pets. Where, you know, she can just be alone and happy and nobody bothers her. So, but yeah, she ha she just hates Wally for existing. Wally has done nothing to deserve it. She just hates him because he exists. I think it's very unfair, but... Yeah, she, she doesn't like him. Ah, anyway, I gotta go into Walmart. I gotta get some ant stuff. And uh, something else I needed. Oh, uh, white vinegar. I, um, I, I mentioned it before, my refrigerator. The repairman told me this. The little drain for the, the freezer, you know, it drips water down. Sometimes mold and, or mildew or something can build up in that drain tube and it backs up and it causes your refrigerator to leak. Well, mine was doing that. So I had a repairman come out and he cleared it out. And he told me, he said, if you will, about every six months or so, get like enough to fill a shot glass, just vinegar. And that little hole down in the freezer that the water drips down into when it defrosts, pour that down in the hole and if there is anything accumulating in there, it will kill it and flush it out. So I have a reminder on my phone every six months to pour, it just says pour vinegar down the drain. And I, and I found that the white vinegar doesn't smell as strong as the apple cider vinegar does. It doesn't matter what kind, just any kind of vinegar would do. Pour it down in there. Just, you don't have to pour a lot, just enough to fill a shot glass. Pour it down in there. Of course, my refrigerator is stupid, and the hole is in the very, very back, and you have to pull all the draw the, sh the drawers out to get down to it, and even then, you got to use a funnel to get it down in there. It's a pain in the ass, but every six months, I do that, and I know I just did it 
a couple of weeks ago and I keep meaning to get some more vinegar because every now and then I'll pour it down the drains in the sink too. If they smell a little funky, I'll just pour a little bit down in there. It takes care of the funkiness. So I always keep a little bottle of it under the sink in the kitchen, but I noticed it was getting kind of low, so I need to get another bottle of that. And um, I think that's it. And then I got to go to Aldi because we need bread and water. <laughs> yes, our tap water tastes like asshole, and I don't like it. So it's it tastes like pool water, not poo water, but pool p o o a l pool water. It's gross. Yeah. So, we don't drink it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go to Aldi, and then I don't know what I'm doing after that. I have to make some phone calls and run some errands. And that's my day. So, thank you so much for watching and for being here. I really hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you again soon.